because he met an angel in the house of God. Amen. So Limbi never kumanya malaika. Never know. I had an interesting dream. Um, I dreamt that I was going to watch the World Cup, but my connecting flight was somewhere in the Arabic countries. Amen. And so, I missed my connection because everything in the terminal was written in Arabic. <laughs> so I couldn't read, couldn't understand. By the time I was understanding that my flight was taking off, it was already in the sky. <laughs> Until somebody made me understand what was written um, in the airport. And so sometimes we can miss an opportunity that is ours simply because we cannot understand the writing on the wall. Amen. But when we understand the writing, then we come into a place where we get what God has prepared for us. So you will notice in the Gospels that it is very common that Jesus would teach and then he would heal the people. Amen. So tonight, I'll continue on the series of healing. From the last session on healing I talked about, I will continue from there. Amen. And if you are not here, don't worry. We will just continue from there. Hallelujah. So I want to look at an atmosphere that brings healing and an atmosphere that brings disease. There are two atmospheres. There is one that can bring healing and there is one that can bring disease. Amen. And so God may pour out his glory, his power, his presence to heal us, to touch us, and to do so many things. It would be good to see the atmospheres that are there that will promote healing or the ones that will hinder healing. Because that way, as we listen, I may look deep inside just to see if there is an atmosphere that is blocking him or there is an atmosphere that is not being developed in me to allow his glory to move. Amen. So in Genesis chapter 3, we see the fall of man. So when God created man, man was perfectly healthy. His bones were okay. The quality sickness, no flu, no malaria, nothing. He was okay. But when man fell from God, we see that from that time, suffering came. And so in the last session that I had taken, I explained from Luke chapter 3 that the father of God, of Adam, was God. Amen. And we say the primary cause of sickness in the human race was separation from God. Because before the fall of man, there was no sickness, there was no disease. But after the fall of man, when man was separate from God, then all the things that crept in had a way of coming in. And so we see that from the beginning, separation from God caused disease. Now you can break up that word instead of saying it nicely, disease, like doctors, just say this is, amen, no longer at ease. So because man was separated, he was diseased. He was no longer at ease, just like the word comfort. You are comfortable where you are. If you are not comfortable, you are discomforted or something like that. So this is, you are no longer at ease. So the relationship broken from God was a primary cause of those things to come in. And when those things came in, they came with fear, stress, anxiety, and the rest. Are we together? And so we see that there are some sicknesses that are caused by natural causes. They are bitten by malaria. You drink water that is contaminated. You have a running stomach. We won't cast out a demon. Maybe while I'm or something, your, your, your stomach will be okay. Amen. Hallelujah. We are already quiet in Shiranda and Shupiri. I will continue from where Bishop Mukwasa ended. <laughs> All right. So, Mark 2, let's read in Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. I'll read very fast. Again, he entered into Capernaum, 
after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house, and straight away they were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive him, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word to them. So here you see he preached the word to them, and they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was uh, born of fowl. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the praise, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they broke it up, they let down the bed therein of the sick palsy lay. Jesus saw their face, faith. He said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. But there are certain of the scribes sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Immediately Jesus perceived in the spirit that they reasoned within themselves and said unto them, why reason you these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the sick of palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or arise and take up your bed and walk. Amen. So here Jesus poses a question. This man goes into Dr. Masumbu's office, and instead of administering Panado to him, what they expected, she says, your sins be forgiven. <laughs> are we together? And those who are with the patient say, which is easier, to give Panado <laughs> or to say thy sins be forgiven? So they were expecting him to say, be healed, and rather than saying that, he says, your sins be forgiven. So we look at diseases. Some diseases are not caused by natural effects. They have their primary roots in spiritual activities. So for Christ to want to address a matter to the fullness, he decides to go to the root. Because sometimes we want to deal with the leaves. You cut the leaves and the root is still in the ground and it springs up again. So Jesus attends to the matter and says, your sins are forgiven. In other words, if those sins be forgiven, it means the power that was generating that sickness would automatically be diffused or defeated. If he was healed without his sins being forgiven, then the same thing that caused that sickness to come will still come back to him. Are we together? So by this we see that it's possible that some sicknesses can be as a result of sin. And as I said the other time, when we think of sin, we think of adultery, fornication, drunkardness, and witchcraft, the top five. So once we clean up that list, we'll say, Ine I don't get drunk, I'm not a prostitute, so I'm innocent. But I'll take the bishop's route on Sunday. He talked about bitterness, unforgiveness, and anger. All those are what? Sins. So you might not be getting drunk, but you might be bitter, unforgiving, slanderous, destroying other people, and still that might be what? A sin. So we are saying without mentioning a particular sin, there are primary sicknesses that can be caused by sin. And so you can pray, anoint, call fire from heaven, and nothing is happening because the root is intact. And so we are taking that truth to see the atmosphere that causes disease and the atmosphere that brings sickness. So we clearly see that there are some diseases that can be promoted by offenses. Are we together? If you look at some towns where Jesus went, he went to his city, Nazareth. He couldn't heal people there. The Bible says he could not heal because they were offended. They said, is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not Joseph and Mary's son? Are his brothers not here with us? And because of that offense, Jesus could not do anything among them, even though the power of God was present to heal. Are we together? So we clearly see that the power of God can be hindered by offenses. Are we together? So if God was going to heal somebody offended, then he would say, your sins, what? Be forgiven. Okay, it's becoming quiet. Let me carry on as if I'm in the studio. <laughs> so some sicknesses are directly related to the things that are going on 
in a person's life. And without repentance or forgiveness, then some things will not go away. So God forgave, and when he forgave this man, all his sins were forgiven. Are we together? Let's go to Mark 11, verse 25 and 26. We can put it on the board. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your father also wish... Ah, okay, well, the conversion need a friend. If you have ought against... Uh -huh. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it and let it go in order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you, may also forgive your own failings and shortcomings and let them go. Are we together? When you stand praying, do what? Forgive so that your father in heaven may do what? Can we go to what he's saying? Let's see what is in verse 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your failings and what? Shortcomings. So that is not Peter's vision. It is the Lord's vision. Thank you. So if I have things I have for the past five years, I fully rub I or know what you. At least she won't beat me. <laughs> I've been angry with Eudanoa for the past five years. It means all the repentances I've been making for my sins for the past five years are where? Pending list. Like in government, they have in, pending, out. Are we together? So if my father will not hear me because I'm keeping issues in my heart, what if... That sickness I was carrying was a result of an issue that I've locked up in me. Then it means that atmosphere will create an atmosphere of sickness. And if I do not release things, then God is also keeping my own record. Are we together? I know it doesn't sound friendly, but they never want to run it. Eh? He said it himself. But if you forgive, God will forgive you. Amen. If you go in Luke chapter 7, verse 47 to 50, let's see what is there. Luke 7, 47 to 50. Luke chapter 7, verse 47 to 50. I am alone. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven because she loved much, but he who is who, he who is forgiven little, loves little. Let's go to verse 48. And he said unto her, your sins are forgiven. Verse 49. Then those who were at the table with began to say among themselves, who is this that forgives sin? Verse 50. We go to the next verse. But Jesus said unto the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace, in freedom, from all distress that I experienced as a result of sin. There it is. Go in what? Peace. She didn't even ask for healing. She was just there, but go in peace from all distress. We know that distress can make a person sick. Are we together? There are complications that when you go to the hospital, Vapel, Panado, and everything, there is no response. There is no response because there is distress inside. Are we together? But when those things are removed, the peace of God comes. So it means this woman went to the Lord troubled. She had burdens. She had issues. And though she didn't confess them, the moment he says, go in peace, your sins, which are many, are forgiven. And you've been made whole. It therefore means there are some things that can be there hindering us from healing, hindering us from experiencing the power of God. James chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. Let's track together another media. James chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. And the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, 
and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. There again, this is James, the brother, the half brother of the Lord. for what his brother had said. Are we together? He relates healing to sickness. So you pray for the sick, and if he has sinned, the Lord will what? Forgive him. Now, I'm not trying to say every sickness is a result of sin, but per adventure it is. It is an opportunity to investigate the heart. Are we together? Psalm 107 verse 17. Psalm 107 verse 17. Let us just see if the word of God can convince us. Psalm 107 verse 17. Some are fools made ill because of the way of their transgressions and are afflicted because of their iniquities. This one is more clearer than the other one. Stephio. Some, okay, I can jump that one for your sake. Some are made ill. <laughs> what has happened? Let's go to the verse. Some are made ill because of the way of their transgressions. To transgress is to break a law or to break boundaries that you know. Are we together? Willfully break them. Then iniquities are those things which a person decides they will continue carrying them on and they have become part of them. Are we together? So, for example, a person can tell a lie today and transgress and they say sorry. But when it becomes their normal way of life, it becomes an iniquity. Are we together? So it is telling us whether sick transgressions or iniquity, they can also cause what? Sickness. Are we together? It may save you hospital bills just to have this Bible study. Are we together? It may save you from CT scans. We can't see anything, but we can see that what? It can save you. Let's go to Psalm chapter 30. 8 verse 3 to 8. Psalm chapter 38 verse 3 to 8. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. Neither is there any health or rest in my bones because of what? My sins. So there again it comes back. You can see how many writers are just relating this and remember, I didn't say sin is just adultery, fornication, and drunkenness. Have a wide scope. Have a wide range. Are we together? The Bible says, to him who knows what is right. If he does not do it, to him it is what? Songatamum poseshe after the service, to him it is what? <laughs> Let's go to Hosea chapter 7, verse 1. Hosea chapter 7, verse 1. I'm reducing your bills, your hospital bills, <laughs> by reading the scriptures. When I would heal Israel, then Ephraim's guilt was uncovered, the wickedness of Samaria, how they practice falsehood, and the thief enters, and the troops of bandits ravage and rage without. Just the first line tells us, when I would have healed Ephraim, Israel, then Ephraim's sin was uncovered. In other words, the time for me to heal them came just as I was about to touch. Then the sin was uncovered. It's like, okay, let's wait. They are not ready. Are we together? And there are some things like that that can hinder healing. The presence of God can be here to heal. But because I've held the grudge for 15 years, that grass came from you, okay? We we'll never forgive. You're angry. When healing was moving in the service, then Ephraim's sin was what? Discovered. And so it stopped the whole process. There are processes that can stop the move of God. Let's carry on. Micah chapter 6, verse 13. We are reading, 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 reading. Then we'll tell the story. 
Therefore, I have also smitten you with a deadly wound and made you sick, lying, laying you desolate, waste, and deserted. Because of what? Therefore, I have smitten you with a deadly wound. Maybe Chironda, maybe Chipute, we don't know. And made you sick, laying you desolate, waste. Fire Karipa, I'm a joint, you say Fire Karipa. Because of what? Sins. So we see sin can be a doorway to afflicting your flesh. Are we together? And it may just be sin in the heart. So we see that um, God is good. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For this nation's heart has grown gross, fat and dull, and their ears heavy and difficult of hearing, and their eyes they have tightly closed, lest they see and perceive with their eyes, and hear and comprehend the sense with their ears, and grasp and understand with their heart, and turn that I should heal them. So these people could not be healed because they could not understand. They could not perceive. Their ears were closed. Their eyes were closed. If you're not sure, but in the dream, I missed the flight because it was written in Arabic. I could not perceive. I could not read. I could not understand. This is what it is saying. There are some things you can refuse to accept and it will remain Arabic to me. Until I accept it, then I'll catch the next flight to healing. Are we together so far? So we see that there are some things that can hinder the healing of God. Now, if you look at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, this book is very, very interesting. I want us to go to chapter 28. Let's start from verse 14. We are looking at the atmosphere that causes sickness, and disease. And you shall not turn aside to, from any of the commands which I command you today, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods. Verse 15, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, his statutes which I command you today, then all these cases shall come upon you, and overtake you. Are we together? So now let's go to verse 20 so that we jump and we make some progress. Verse 20. What does it say in verse 20? It says, And the Lord shall send on you cases, confusion, rebuke in everything which you set your hand to until you are destroyed and you perish quickly from the earth. Now, if you look at that atmosphere, the atmosphere of confusion, the atmosphere of disease is created by rebellion. Are we together? Now, if you read the whole passage of Deuteronomy 28, you will notice that there are several cases, several pronouncements that are spoken, several diseases that come after this word is mentioned. There is confusion. There is rebuke in everything a person sets their hand to. In other words, a stressful event is created in the opening line. Are we together? Then after that stressful event, then you notice that all the things that are following down as cases in that verse, they are coming from that description of an atmosphere that is bad. Are we together? For example, if we go to verse, just a moment, let me give you the verses. We go to verse, mm, just a moment. Verse 20. We are in verse 20. Why is it looking short? Okay. I'll read mine. The Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, rebuke, in all that you set your hand to until you are destroyed. Verse 21. The Lord shall make a pestilence cleave unto you until you are consumed. There a disease comes because of a stressful situation. The stressful situation came as a result of these people. They ignored the voice of God. They refused the counsel of God. And when they refused the counsel of God, they were on their own. 
So there are some conditions that can be created simply by an atmosphere that is prevailing in a life. Verse 22, we can read it together. Let's put it on the board. The Lord will smite you with consumption, fever, inflammation, fairy heat, sweat, drought, blast, mid you, and they shall pursue you until you perish. And all these things are coming from one root. Are we together? I know it's not sounding funny because you're seeing fever and you're seeing inflammation. Could it be that my bones are inflamed because I'm angry with somebody? <laughs> okay, now you're too quiet. You are really too quiet for me. Are we together? So there it talks about inflammation. Your muscles can be inflamed. Things can be inflamed in your body just because of anger, just because of anxiety. And all these things are created by a condition that can be prevailing in the life of a person. What am I trying to say? An atmosphere that does not carry peace will become a breeding place for afflictions, a breeding place for diseases. And the body can be troubled. Are we together? In the last discussion, I told you something about a study that was made. They took these men, a number of them, some of them, they had a mild heart condition. Are we together? And then they put them together in a study, and then they wanted to see the nature of their relationships. They got those who were happily married as one group, those who were in troubled marriages as another group, and those who were just happy and single as a final group to control, to observe. And that they observed after a period of five years is that those who had been in bad relationships experienced a deterioration in their health. Those who were in happy relationships remained the same for a period of five years, and there was no significant change. Why? Because this one is dwelling in a place where there is anger. So the heart condition is becoming worse. Are we together? It is an atmosphere that is creating that condition. And so there are some atmospheres, if we keep them around our lives, they will put pressure on our bodies. Are we together so far? In verse 25, it talks about terror. Terror also comes from a stressful condition. A heart of a person can be terrorized by things happening in the neighborhood, by things happening in their lives, by things happening everywhere, and they live in fear. Are we together? The Bible says what? Fear not. It is a command. Fear not. And we have heard that it says fear not 300 and what? 65 times. So if I choose to live in fear, I have done what? We have done what? We have seen ourselves, Savior. So if I allow fear to torment my life, to grip my life, to rule my life in every way, then I have opened a door for affliction to come. And just by releasing anxieties, releasing fears, releasing the unknowns, healing can come in your body. So we are saying there are atmospheres that can create sickness and the atmospheres that can create peace. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, let's read that one. Philippians 4 verse 7. Let's read that one. Okay, let's start from verse 6. Verse 6. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. He gives us a solution, an atmosphere of peace. Are we together? Now let's read verse 7. And the peace of God shall be yours, the tranquil state of your soul, 
assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, and shall garrison and mount a guard over your heart and your minds in Christ. So the solution is to make what is in your heart known unto God. When the peace of God surrounds your heart, fills your heart, it creates an atmosphere for healing. It creates an atmosphere for wholeness. Thanksgiving also creates an atmosphere for healing. It creates an atmosphere for wholeness. That's why when Jesus received the two little fish, is it the, the, the little fish and loaves of bread, he lifted them up, gave thanks to God, and they multiplied. Are we together? When we develop a culture of giving thanks to God, even the things which seem not to be sufficient or working, God will work it out. God will multiply it for you. And his peace will guard your heart. Now, if his peace guards your heart, your mind is at rest. Your heart is also at rest. Your internal organs are also what? They are also at rest. And so you find that you may find healing in your body just by releasing some things that we carry as heavy things in our lives. Are we together? And so Jesus goes to this man and says, your sins, which are many, are forgiven. Receive my peace. He says to the woman, your sins, which are many, are forgiven. Go in peace. And so the end result of the forgiveness is that a person will have peace. So I can create that atmosphere around my life. One of the things I need to do is to investigate what is in my heart, what is in my soul, what am I keeping. There are times that people come for prayer, and these days, I like to talk to people before praying for them. I ask questions. I started that route because we would pray for some people, they would be healed, others are not healed. When they come for deliverance, they are delivered. And the results in deliverance are different. That is me. I'm not talking for others. <laughs> are we together? When we deliver people, they are delivered. When we pray for healing, then I noticed good deliverance to the Pushama questions. How did it start? Where did it come from? Are you keeping grudges? Are you keeping unforgiveness? Have you done this and this? When they release, it's like the deliverance is so fast. Those people who come angry and with all sorts of issues in their hearts, they are not ready to release. Could we get for two hours casting out a demon? It's not going because it has a legal ground. Now, that is a demon that we can hear speaking out of a disease. It may also have a legal ground. And sometimes we ask questions. How did it start? It started here. In which year? It started in this year. Because we see that Jesus also faced those questions. This man comes to him. I have an epileptic child. Your disciples could not heal him. And he asked him a question, and the man started explaining. He started when he was young. It throws him in the fire. He convulses. He does this and that. He explained the whole account to Jesus. Are we together? After explaining the account, he was healed. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to ask for every account, but I'm just showing you that it is in the Bible. Sometimes you have to talk about what is there in order to release it. And so I see that those who release things, their healing seems to come speedily, seems to come fast. There are times people learn that something pierces my body. It has been there for years. I've been to prayer, shana, shana. I've been to here and there. The moment you say that, you have given me a license to ask questions. How did it start? Well, it started when my boyfriend dumped me in Shadi Adi I even know that, oh, so this is not a sickness. It is a result of the state of the soul. And I am still angry because he brought in Salam and he did this and that. Are we together? By releasing those issues, you find that healing penetrates the body penetrates the heart of a person. And so there are many issues 
people carry around in bitterness, like Bishop was teaching on Sunday, anger, if you let them go, you find that your peace will come like a river. Healing will begin to flow. So if your issue is connected to the things I have said, it is good tonight to release them in the name of Jesus. And we are going to trust God to heal those issues in Jesus' name. Amen. Some have issues with their mothers. Some have issues with their fathers. Some with their spouses. But in the dribble, let go of that dribbling. Are we together? In the name of Jesus. If you are the person you are angry with will not even feel the pain or the sickness. But the person that feels the sickness, the impact in their body, is the one carrying the issue. I took interest, I've been reading a lot of scientific papers just to see how these things affect the body. Stress can dampen your immune system. We talked about fever, it was there, did you? Fever. A person who is stressed is most likely to catch a flu much faster than the one who is happy. But it is a reality. Because when you are stressed, even if you are born and all your favorite things, no appetite, no desire to eat. Let's say you like playing football and you are stressed and they bring a, 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 a football here with the best players, are you going to play? Your body is not willing. And your immune system follows the condition of your soul and your heart. Meaning that if you are stressed and dumped, even the immune system response is slow. So now you want to malaria, cocaria, it's thinking, should I go, should I not go, should I sit? Flu, the immune response is also very, very slow. So you find that you pass through a place, our son, some week, no flu, but I won't say much, but distressed, they have come out with flus, and you are wondering, I mean, I'm shaming, just be happy. Release issues in the name of Jesus. Are we together? Release issues, forgive people, change the atmosphere around your life, and there is a breakthrough. That will come. So we are going to pray tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are too quiet. We are going to what? Amen. And we are going to release issues. Amen. Amen. So first we are going to stand up. And we are going to talk to God. And then we'll have Holy Communion. So that we have enough time to pray for those who want to be prayed for. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We glorify your name. We exalt your name. I hope you have heard something tonight <laughs> in Jesus' name. Father, we say, search our hearts. Lay your hand, lay your finger on that area where, Lord, we need to release, let go of things. It may not just be sickness or disease. It may be even other things that are hindered in your life simply because of that atmosphere. And we are releasing that atmosphere to God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We call upon you. Just ask the Lord to set your heart. Bring your heart before him. I say, Lord, help me to see what I need to see in my life. Help me to release what I need to release. If you are afflicted, it may be even other prayers that are hindered. And you are not seeing the results. Just let go of things tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor your name. We lay our hearts before you. Where we need to forgive, Lord, we are releasing issues. We are releasing matters. Even those who betrayed you 20 years ago, you need to release them tonight. Even those that left you with burdens that have been too hard to carry. Tonight, just release them in the name of Jesus. Father, we say where there are issues that are related to things that we have kept, we ask you to forgive us. 
We ask you to wash us in your blood. We ask you to purify our hearts, purify our minds. Even those things that have injured your heart for a long time, today just release them. Actually, release people by name, since you are the only one hearing. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, remove from us the atmosphere that promotes sickness, disease, affliction in our lives. Let that atmosphere be removed as we confess, as you wash us in your blood. Lord, may there be a deep unlocking, a deep unlocking in our spirits, a deep unlocking in our spirits. Release matters. Release matters. Twato tela ishina lienu. Twato tela pamola bange. Twato tela ishina Father, tonight let there be a deep unlocking in things beyond sicknesses, in things beyond diseases, in things that concern your people today. Let there be a deep, a great unlocking, Lord. We declare that those keys that have been thrown away and buried, we say that, Lord, even from grave sites, they will be uprooted tonight, those doorways that were invisible. Lord, tonight we say that, Lord, they will become visible by your glory visible by your presence lord that heart that has been unable to perceive unable to hear unable to see tonight we declare that the key is coming the key of your glory the veil is being removed oh god thank you for the release of your spirit thank you for the release of your presence thank you for the overcoming spirit that is here tonight Thank you for the spirit of triumph. Thank you for the spirit of victory. Thank you for the spirit of overcoming. Thank you that, Lord, you are opening doorways that seem to have been shut and inaccessible. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. I lift every life that, Lord, is looking at their point of defeat. That, Lord, today it will become their point of victory, their point of triumph. Some things that are hard to let go tonight, just let go of them. Just let go of them. Even the hard mistakes, even where you have not forgiven yourself, because others is self-condemnation self-criticism tonight forgive yourself release yourself whatever failure it is that is carried inside secretly and nobody knows about it let the glory of the eternal one reach you in that place and bring healing oh father we bless your name we thank you for the atmosphere of your healing presence thank you that lord you are breaking through the iron bars the iron bars of the conscious, you are breaking through them. You are bringing your peace. You are bringing your presence. You are releasing your glory. 
Oh, Father, we say, may you wash us now in your blood. Wash us in the eternal blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, Lord, as we forgive others and ourselves, may you forgive us. Wash us in your blood. And may that forgiveness of heaven bring a mighty release, a mighty dose of happiness, a mighty dose of joy, a mighty dose of triumph. We thank you for that freedom that is coming in the heart, in the spirit, in the mind. Thank you, Lord, that you are healing deep places. You are touching deep places and locking the shadows. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are going to come to the communion table now in that prayerful mode. And then after that, those who need prayer will invite you to come for prayer so that we have enough time to minister to anybody that wants to be prayed for. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me have the elder to come and help me and the leaders. In Jesus' name. In the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken up for you. And in the same way, when he had taken the cup, he says, this is the cup of the covenant that is poured out for you. And so this table is for you to be one body with the Lord Jesus Christ, to let his blood wash and penetrate every place that needs penetration tonight, that you may be healed, you may be made whole in fellowship. And so as you come to the communion table tonight, come with a mindset of receiving from him. Whether it is healing, whether it is wholeness, in whichever area that applies to what we are talking about, may the Lord minister it unto you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>